Hello again there YouTubers. I've got another review for her for you. Gonna try another stout. This time I'm gonna go with one of my personal favorites. This one hails from a beer uh, a, a brewery in Ferguson of New Brunswick. This is Pickaroon's Timber Hog. Made by the Northampton Brewery. I've actually personally visited this brewery. I actually visited the brewery like shortly after um, the uh, their uh, Imperial Pilsner came out the first time to the market. That was pretty cool. Um, yeah. So let me take a look at it. This is a traditional stout. It's actually like a classified as an Irish dry stout. Uh, this classic Irish style dry stout is the basic background of this. Aromatic ebony elixir, but deviations may occur from batch to batch as we improvisationally wander through variations on the theme. Yeah, and it's also en français on the other side. La Stout Classique, Irlande, Serre de Fond, blah 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 blah. I'm not uh, bilingual, so I can't read completely. <clears throat> Alright, so let's uh, crack it open, take a look. Once again, um, nice artwork on the front of the bottle. You can see where it's got the timber hog uh, itself, like a warthog kind of look. Uh, this particular beer is 5% um, ABV, which makes it just a hair stronger than most uh, like Irish stouts. Like uh, compare like Guinness and O'Hara's are in the low 4.2, 4.3 areas, uh, whereas this one is a bit higher. Let's give it a pour. Oh, I should also say, uh, from time to time, Pickaroons will uh, will make variations on their batches. As such, they also put uh, batch numbers and manufacturing dates on right on the side of the bottle. This one here is made from batch uh, number 1380, uh, which was packaged on the 30th of March, 2011. Yeah, so it's yeah, a little bit of a month and a half old. Today's the 15th of May. Give it a pour. Right now you can see that that's extremely thick. I'll also say this is a, uh, a 440 milliliter glass where uh, this is a 500 milliliter beer so it's not going to hold all of it. But, looks like it's come close. Look at that head. Nice well developed. That's a good pour. <laughs> Still something left in the bottle though. Right there you can see it's got a nice two finger head. The head is like a a tan brown uh, looks like the bubbles range from like coarse to creamy and they're mostly creamy um, and it's taking on a pillowy appearance as it uh, dis dis as they dissipate looks like the heads actually having some decent retention and it's going down slow yeah uh, well, color wise there is almost no light getting through that that is extremely dark it, uh, it has maybe a little lead red tinges, deep deep red tinges around the edges and that's it. Uh, there's almost no light getting through that. Let's give it a sniff. You're getting a, like a mainly caramel malt. Hints of chocolate and espresso mainly caramel malt coming out in the scent I will say that that smells really appetizing mmm yeah like a like a chocolate caramel mainly caramel pretty good yeah um, definitely sounds smells pleasing so far Let's give it a taste. Whew. Mm. Oh my. Bitter. Roasted malt bitterness. The bitterness is quite dominant. But the aftertaste fades into like a caramel, pinch of chocolate, 
espresso taste. Because, yeah, it fades into a, like an espresso bitterness in the back of the throat due to the roasted malt. Uh, like a deep roasted. Yeah, that's pretty good. A hint of grassy note actually comes in the in the back. But not enough to be off-putting. Yeah, that's not bad. Carbonation-wise, it's pretty good carbonation. Finishes off. Mouthfeel is is thick, but it finishes off quite dry. It leaves a nice lingering bitterness in the back of the throat. It's very much like O'Hara's Irish Stout. Although the roasted bitterness almost takes on a vinegary but not quite quality to it, where it's it's just due to its intensity, I think. It doesn't taste bad. Oh no, that's a nice and intensely bitter stout. Yeah, I'd say that this is kind of like a in the same kind of area. Nice, nice, good Irish dry stout attempt that fits into the same kind of area as like Guinness extra stout and um, uh, O'Hara's uh, O'Hara's Irish stout. Uh, the alcohol content also falls within that bracket as well. Yeah, it's not bad. And of course. Timberhog, or sorry, Pickaroons, as they said, they make changes from point to point, time to time. Variations on the recipe as they uh, continue to perfect the beer that uh, give it a different kind of character. Like a couple months later, you might have a Timberhog that's considerably more chocolatey because they used more chocolate malt, or considerably more bitter because they used maybe, maybe they used some more like uh, different types of hops or something in the beer, <laughs> if they used any at all. Um, it doesn't really come off as being a hoppy beer. Well, they probably use some to taste. Yeah. I think you owe it to yourself to give it a try if you get a chance to put in your past in through New Brunswick. I've only ever seen this in stores in New Brunswick, so... Yeah. Um, mm, it finishes off with a nice coffee taste. I'm going to give it a 4 or a 5. Yeah, that's that's pretty good. I'd say it's right up there with uh, with O'Hara's Irish Stout and uh, Guinness Extra Stout. If you got it a chance, give it a shot. Okay, bye.